Right guys, we've come out today. Spring's just around the corner. It's perfect time to start talking through hard pellet fishing. It's a fantastic method that can really take venues apart, especially when you're targeting better stamp fish. All I've got today with me is a pint of hard four mils, a pint of softened four mils and some hookers. It really couldn't be more simple than that. Hopefully today we'll put that point to practice and we'll catch a load of fish for the cameras. And there we go, first cast, literally the float only just caught, and we've got a lovely common car, hopefully the first of many. Right, so I'm going to talk you through where I fish, why I decided to fish there, and how I start my swim. So firstly, I've fished this venue a lot of times, and I've fished this lake a few times, and I always prefer to start at around 14 metres. What I like to bear in mind and why I pick that is you have to think if I pick the catapult up and start pinging I need to be able to ping 4mm pellets comfortably. At this time of year in early spring as well the fish aren't always super confident coming close. The water clarity is still, still quite clear. I can see probably 6 to 8 inches down so they're not always going to come in really close. Now a key thing that I do when I'm starting my peg is I don't go and plough loads of bait in. One thing you've got to remember is you can put it in, but you can't take it out. So I'll generally start my peg with some softened four mils, around 40 pellets, and I'll feed them with a large pot. Why I feed the softened pellets is I think every fish in the, peg, in the lake can eat them. So I don't worry about overfeeding my, my swim. So I'll just quickly ship these out and pop them in. So after the initial start-up feed with a big pot, I tend to leave my peg for around 20 minutes, if I can, to let that bait settle and let the fish settle over it. After that, I'll always start by feeding with a little pole pot. Personally, I prefer to use the small matrix pole pot with the uh, height extender. This is just because I know I can get the exact amount of pellets that I want every single time in it, and if I'm catching a few fish, I don't get a bit too giddy and with a larger pot start putting too much bait in. So again, pretty much the same amount as what I fed with a big pot, maybe slightly less, 30 pellets in, the big, in my uh, small pot. And that's what I'll feed every go. Now, that's how I start my peg. But throughout the day, there might be times where I pick my catapult up and I start pinging. I can't gauge that at the start of the match. That is something that I'll just work out throughout the day. And I'll talk you through later on in the session the signs that you might pick up and why I would then pick my catapult up and start feeding with it. So that's how I'd start my peg. I'm going to get out there now and let's see if we can get a couple more fish. Pop your pellets in your pot. Now a little tip here, dunk your pot under the water with your pellets in. That just prevents them bouncing around when you're shipping out, helps them stay in the pot. You just take your time shipping out. It's not a race, just make sure you get out there without dropping your bait everywhere. Pick your marker on the far bank. And what I like to do, turn my pot on its side exactly the same as what I did with the large pot and just tap. So I'm creating a, a bit of a bigger area for the pellets. They're not all going in one tiny little bit. So flick the rig in. The reason why I'm flicking it in, I'm fishing a light rig today. We'll talk about in more detail about why uh, the rig choice um, and the different rigs that you can use on this. So you tap your bait in, you flicked your rig out. And then what I sometimes like to do is just as it gets that last little fall, I just pick my float up and just lower it back in right over the kill set. And there you go, one on straight away. That is literally a perfect example 
of what should happen. A little stocky F1. Lively little one. There we go. Now the beauty of fishing hard pellets, and I fish a lasso, and again I'll go into more detail why I do that later on, is you can, you don't need to bait back up, straight back out, again, 20 pellets in my pot, you can see it's filled right to the top there, I know I've got the perfect amount, dunk your pot, and off we go. So again, find your marker on the far bank, turn your pot, lift your pot, your pole high, and I tap those pellets in. Flick my rig out. It's starting to cock now. Just as it starts to get to that point where it's almost cocked lift it up six inches and then just lower it back down so what what that's doing there there's another one on what you have to imagine is that rig is falling through the water in an arc like this but as it just gets that last bit i'm just moving it up and i'm just dropping it straight down so that I've taken any arc out of the line and as soon as it goes down you get instant indication so I've got no slack line between my pellet and the float and hopefully that allows you to get a much cleaner bite sometimes what you'll find if you leave it to drop all the way down in that arc it, if you've got a few fish in your peg like we have today you can find that it'll lay over a fish's back sometimes and you'll get a liner or you'll you know you'll you'll miss the bite another beautiful little stocky and again don't need to change my pellet i generally change my pellet depending on how well it's fishing but maybe after five fish again that depends on on the density of the pellets that you've got um, that you're using for your hook pellets. I've got a really good batch that I'm using at the moment and I could probably catch 10 fish on the same pellet if I, if I needed to. So again, we've had a few quick fish. And you kind of expect that at this venue and, and a lot of other venues, you'll generally find that you'll catch a few quick fish, but I, I do expect as the session goes on for it to get more difficult. And there's a few little things that I do when I'm fishing this, this method that can help you catch a couple of extra fish. And we'll touch upon those later in the video, whether it's to do with rigs, feeding, how you lower your rigging. But again, I'll go through all those points in a little bit. See if we can get one more. There's a few fish there now again. If I haven't had a bite or a, or a proper bite, Click your rig in again, let it fall through the water. So a lot of the time, especially with these big F1s, when the water's clear, they really do watch your bait falling through the water. This is another thing, this time of year, you know, like the sun there, we can see the sun's just starting to come out, but it was, it was two degrees last night. It was almost a frost. The water's still really cold, but the sun, as soon as it comes out, you can feel the heat from the sun and those fish straight away want to come off the bottom. And this is another fantastic benefit to fishing hard pellets. So on the same line that I'm fishing my deck rigs is where I'd fish shallow. So say in the next half an hour, if the sun stays out, starts to warm up, 
and I carry on getting these line bites like this and we think, I think, right, the fish aren't on the bottom. I'm really going to struggle to get them down on the bottom and to, and to get them feeding and hit my bite. I can pick a shallow rig up, pick a catapult up and start pinging some pellets over the exact same line. And there we go. So I'm going to carry on fishing this line for a bit and then after this I'll talk you through the rigs and feeding techniques. Right, so I'll talk you through the rigs that we're using today. It's really simple. We've got two rigs that I like to use on the deck. I've got a light strung out rig, and then I've got a heavier bulk with a couple of droppers rig. So I'll talk you through the rig I started on this morning, which is a 0.2 carbon slim. Now this is my light strung out rig. So I have 016 mainline, and then I have five number 10 shot spread out so these are equally spread out around six inches apart until you get to the last one which is eight inches from the hook length and the reason for this is i just want that last fall of the pellet to be really slow and as rep replicating the rest of the free bait the free offerings as closely as possible so i have a six inch or 12 hook length to a size 18 mxc6 and then I prefer to use a lasso when I'm fishing pellets on the pole. I just think you get much better bait presentation, plus I can use the same pellet multiple times. Elastic, this is a sample elastic, but it's basically the equivalent of an eight to 10 slick. Again, this time of year, the fish are just starting to wake up. So I still think you can get away with a softer elastic. It just means that when you strike, the fish can swim out your peg and not create as much disturbance. And obviously used in conjunction with a side puller anyway, I can, I can tension it up as much as I need to to get the fish's head up. Onto the second rig. So again, exactly the same main line, 016. The key difference this time, I've got a 0.5 float. Again, exactly the same style float, still a slim carbon, but a much heavier float. This rig I'd use if we were catching a lot of fish very quickly or if it was windy. The key thing with pellet fishing is being able to hold your bait steady. So that heavier float really helps you do that. Moving down to the shot in, so probably 18 inches away from the hook, I've got a bulk of number eight. Then just below that, I've got a number 10 dropper, probably eight inches away. Then another eight inches away from that, I've got another number 10. I'm not really fluttering this one down. This is more about dropping it down, holding your float six inches out the water and then dropping it that last six inches, trying to get it down to the bottom really quickly. Exactly the same hook length, O12 to a size 18 MXC6. So the benefit with hard pellet fishing is you can really adapt your rigs and your fishing style to, to what the fish want on that particular day. So earlier on this morning, it was overcast and the fish were on the bottom, we were getting really good bites. And we could fish that light rig. It was really nice, you'd drop it through, it'd fall through and you'd get a very positive bite at the end. What happened as we started feeding more bait was we had some stockies come into the peg then switching to a heavier rig, getting it down quickly, fishing a shorter lash and just being able to lift and drop, we caught a lot more fish. The third and final rig that I always have set up at this time of year, I wouldn't class it as a shallow rig, I'd class it as a, as a deep shallow rig, so it's, it's roughly half the depth. And again, it's exactly the same float, but this time it's in a 0.15. Moving down, we've got two Drop a shot, two number 10s, and then again, an O12 hook length, six inches again. And this rig is really for, if I feel like the fish have come up off the bottom, but they're not really coming up shallow, you, you fish it in exactly the same way as you're fishing that 4 by 12 rig strung out. You're not slapping it, you're just laying it out, laying it into the water, let the rig come through, 
If you don't get a bite, lift it up, ping some pellets and drop it through again. And what you'll find is if the big F1s are feeding, this is sometimes how you can catch them real big fish that are difficult to catch. It's a really simple method in terms of you don't need a lot of bait and you don't need loads of fancy rigs. And one benefit is you can pick one line and you've basically got three or four different variations of rigs to help you catch fish throughout the day. So as we touched on at the start of the video, you don't need a lot of bait for this method. So there's about a pint of standard four mil hard pellets in here. Now one little tip I can give, when you get to your peg, literally cover them with water, shake them round only for a few seconds and just drain the water off. That'll just stop any of the pellets from sitting in the surface layer of the water. So if you're tipping any in or you're pinging any in with your catapult, you know that they're all sinking. The other pellets that I brought with me today are exactly the same as these, but they're what we call blown pellets. And I'll explain to you now the difference between the two. So all you do on an evening, before you come fishing the night before, is pop a pint of these in a poly bag and then literally just cover them with some cold water. What I like to do is blow the bag up with some air so that they're not all compressed, dead tight to one another, and then pop them in the fridge and leave them overnight. And the next morning, before you go fishing, get them out, give them a shake, and they're almost like, they're almost double the size, but they're soft. So if I get one between my fingers, you can literally break them into almost like paste. And these, I've caught me so many fish this winter because I can feed and I can feed more aggressively than I could do with a standard hard pellet because everything that comes into your peg, whether it's skimmers, F1s, carp, even roach, because they're already soft and they break down a lot quicker, will, the other fish will eat them. All the fish, all the species that I'm, that I'm targeting will eat them. So when other people are feeding three or four hard pellets, I can feed between eight and 12 of these and attack my pet, uh, peg a lot more aggressively and then the only other thing that I have in my side tray today is a tiny little tub and these have got what I class as four and a half mil hard pellets Now, what I like to look for when I'm when I'm selecting hard pellets is something that's got a high oil content the higher the oil content the more durable the pellet will be which means I can catch more fish on the same pellet so we had to make a switch. The weather's warmed up. A lot of the fish are starting to show themselves on the surface. We weren't really getting the, the indications like we were earlier fishing on the bottom. So over exactly the same line, I picked up my catapult, started pinging three or four pellets, still of the blown four mil ones. Picked up my deep shallow rig, which is set at about half depth and just started laying it in. Got an indication relatively quickly and we've hooked into something much better now. The carp in this lake tend to be a lot, there's a lot of commons and they're really lean, long lean fish. So they do tend to give you the run around. Let's see, hopefully we'll get him in for the cameras. long and lean. Let's see if we can get another. It's got a lot warmer now this morning. It was, you know, it was really cold to start, overcast. The sun's burnt through now. And I've had to pick up my catapult, start pinging a few pellets. You can see there's fish popping the heads up. There's a lot of fish showing themselves on the surface. So I've just switched to a deep shallow rig. I'm not feeding a lot of bait, just pinging in oh, three to four pellets with a catapult. 
just flicking my rig over the top. It's probably going to be a case of today, you'll catch a couple of fish doing this, then they might drop back down. If I stop getting any indications shallow, then I can drop back down at my deeper rigs. I'll probably carry on pinging with a catapult, but if I find I'm getting no indications or, or liners, then I might end up popping my pot back on and getting a you know, column of bait going straight down to the bottom to try and drag them back down. On days like this, it really is a case of like, you never know whether you're gonna catch on the, on the bulk rig, on the strung out rig, on the deep shallow rig. But the, the benefit that you have is you're fishing one line and you've got all areas of your swim covered, fishing one bait. So, you know, on my side tray today, let's say I've got two variants of four mil pellets and some four and a half mil pellets from my hook and that's it. So we've had that carp on the deep shallow line. We've noticed now that they're starting to get, there's starting to be a few pimples on the surface again. So that, that's a good indication that there's some fish in your peg and the chances are that they're towards the bottom again. So I'll give this a couple more minutes. If I don't get any more indications, I'll drop back down onto the, onto the bottom with a, probably with the light strung out rig to start. So we'll come back in. Let's try that bottom rig again. And I'm sure we'll be back into some fish. There's definitely some pimples coming up on the surface, so it looks like the, there's some fish back on the bottom feeding again. Pellet's still good. I'm just going to take my pole pot off because I'm not planning on fishing with it. Or feeding with it, should I say, sorry. Ship out. Pretty much exactly the same as what we were doing with the deep shallow rig, but this one's on the deck. Flick it out. What I will say as well is it can work really well, particularly when it's colder, is flicking your rig past your bait. F1s and skimmers are notorious for just sitting off the... Oh, there we go. Just sitting off the back of your bait. See, and that's the beauty of fishing one of these strung out rigs. When it's falling through the water, so many times your bite is, as soon as you float, ju is just about to settle and you'll get one take it. So as we touched upon earlier when I was discussing the rigs, I prefer to use a lasso to hold my hard pellet in particular when I'm fishing for F1s. So I'll quickly show you how to tie one. So get your main line and you go over your four fingers. Then between your two rear fingers and your two front fingers, pull a line round and wrap around your front two fingers again. So basically what you're creating is a big loop and a small loop. And then basically with the tag end, you're threading your tag end through that loop five times. So there's one, two, three, four, five times. So you've got there, big loop, smaller loop with your tag end of line, twisted through it five times. Now before I pull the knot fully tight, wet your knot and then move it up your, your line as much as you can because you don't want it pulling too tight and kinking your line. And the matrix disgorges, this end here is roughly four millimeters. So when I'm tying my loops, I put them over the top of the disgorger and I pull the loop down tight around the disgorger like this. So I know roughly there that I've got a four mil loop. Slide that off the disgorger. And that is your lasso not tied. And the only thing that's left to do you just trim the tag end off. And there you are, that's how you tie a lasso. So I'll show you how I pop a pellet in. So you can do this a couple of ways. If you have a couple of baiting needles, that's fine. I have a little tool. Push it into the, so you push the two prongs into the loop and pull it open. So you can see there the loop's opened up. 
And then if I get a pellet, so these are the pellets that I've been using today, roughly four and a half mil. Pop your pellet into the loop, pull it tight, and there you have pellet in a lasso. So there's a lasso, and providing you get the right pellets, that will stay on for five, six, seven, potentially even eight fish. You don't want your pellet to sit too far away from your hook. So you need to tie the hook length so that if you're fishing a four mil pellet, you can open it up wide enough to get the pellet in, but so that it doesn't sit too low beneath the hook. So you'll see here, these sit a lot lower than these ones. That's because these are tied for a six mil pellet and these are tied for a four. So if we get one out quickly, I'll quickly show you what I mean. So it's a standard, it's a standard knotless knot. And you'll see there's a gap there. I've got my four mil loop and then I've probably got half a centimetre of line, which allows me enough tolerance to be able to open it up and pop the pellet in. So again, I get my little tools inside the loop, open the loop up. I'm just going to switch hands because this is the way I do it when I'm fishing. There's your loop, slide your pellet in, pull that down. So my loop now and my knot is tight against the pellet. And as you see, once you've pulled your knot and your pellet is sat a couple of millimetres below your hook. Personally for me, that is the optimum presentation for when you're fishing for F1s. Here we go guys, it's a fantastic net of fish, all on hard pellets, caught in a few hours off one line. This is a great example, it's all in the early spring, and as the water warms up, temperature warms up, the days get longer, it's going to get even better. I'm going to slip these back now, hope you enjoy the video.